Welcome, everybody, to the Ultimate Swimmer Monday Motivation Show. I'm your host, Josh Davis, along with my awesome co-host, Noah the Genius Young Trulis. Today is Monday, April 25th, 2022. And yesterday was a big day for both of us. You ran 26 miles, and now your knees are kind of sore. You're you're mildly injured, yes, yes. but, you, but you, mildly. you did it. You did it, man. You did the whole marathon. That was your first one, right? Yeah. Yeah, my first official one. I tried to do one two years ago, uh, and it went so terribly. So I didn't. I don't even count that. I, I made it like ten miles, and I had to walk the last sixteen. So this was my first real marathon. <laughs> I'm very impressed. I've I've watched and cheered many marathons, but I have no desire to do one. And I, but I'm just fascinated with all the folks from all ages, all sizes, all levels. They get out there and they do that thing, and uh, it's yeah. it's incredible. It was so, cool. There was like, and there's probably 20,000 people that ran. I'm just basing that off the number off one of the websites. Um, but it was insane. Like just seeing the crowd of people rush like at the starting line and there's just thousands of people in either direction. It's crazy. It's insane. <laughs> it, it is some cool energy there at the, at the starting line and at the finish. Yeah. I, uh, I really enjoy cheering the marathon. So I'm really proud of you. So you're a little sore. You're going to have to overcome you know, some soreness and mild yeah. little injuries here in the next few days. Now, I I didn't run 26 miles. I took one step this morning when I was leaving to go to the airport at 2.45 a.m. I took one step off the patio at my host family <laughs> in Minneapolis, Minnesota, my wonderful host family, but I didn't know their patio, and I fell off the front patio, and I twisted my ankle. Worst, worst injury I've probably ever had in my life, mm. and I've been hobbling all day long uh, all through the airports as I was getting home. And I was in so much pain <laughs> and it's just really frustrating. And so all these things have been going through my mind, all these frustrations, all these questions and all this like, ah, you know, it's like it just hits you when you get injured. And so I think it's appropriate that today we talk about overcoming adversity, specifically injuries. And there's all kinds of adversities and injuries. You know, obviously there's physical injuries like my ankle, my left ankle's out of whack for a few more days, hopefully not more than few weeks and uh, because i have clinics coming up i need (laughs) i need to try and raise the kids so i gotta let this thing heal but we also have mental and chemical and emotional injuries there can be stuff off physically we can also be off emotionally and chemically and mentally and and i'm i'm glad that that's not as taboo as it was i'm glad that we're able to address that better today than ever and so all of us are going to face adversity that's the constant in every olympian i've ever met of the thousand olympians i've met they all have two things in common. One, they all had bad days. They all had an injury. They all had some adversity they had to overcome. And two, they all have set goals. So they remember why they're doing it and where they're going and what it's going to take to get there. So those two things, every Olympian and champion has in common. They all had adversity. And so I want to talk about some of my favorite uh, stories and quotes of overcoming adversity. Um, you know, I've been hearing a lot and reading a lot about Jordan Peterson. Are you familiar with him, Noah? Yeah, I love Jordan. He's the best. He's really good to listen to. Yeah, so he's got some great quotes, but one of the things, the gist of what he says that keeps emerging is you cannot reach your potential unless you come under successive and progressive levels of pressure and pain. Like you just won't know what you're capable of unless you experience some difficulty, some pressure, some adversity. Because then you adjust and you get stronger and your opportunities broaden, doors open, your your things become more clear, but you had to go through the tough time first. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, if you're if you don't put yourself in a situation where something scares you or it's a little bit uncomfortable, um, you probably won't progress if you don't go through the and fight through that adversity a little bit. Um, when I'm swimming, if I do a set and at the end, sometimes a thought will cross my mind like, I, I kind of feel like I should do a hundred freestyle, like off the blocks for time, like after I've done a hard workout, but I'm like, I really don't want to do that. But whenever I think I don't want to do that, I always just force myself to do it no matter how bad it is, because it helps me get a little bit better. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Second quote I'd like to share by the French philosopher Moliere, the greater the obstacle, the greater glory in overcoming it. So like this ankle sprain seems really uh, a big obstacle, 
but it's going to feel really good when I take care of it and get back in the water and, and heal it and get over it. And it's be like, it's going to really feel good to know that I did everything I could to get over it. So the greater the obstacle, the greater the glory in overcoming it. And we got to get away from something feeling impossible. You got to change impossible to I'm possible. Of course you got to. Yeah. That's when I started the marathon, uh, it was really terrifying. And I was like, I don't know if I can run 26 miles, even though I thought I had done enough training. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. And I felt amazing. Um, the first half and then probably around mile 18, my legs started to cramp up and I really thought that it was going to be like impossible for me to finish. Like, I'm not going to lie. I started panicking. Like my legs were cramping so bad that I could barely walk. And thankfully, uh, is my wife came running up behind me and she somehow caught up to me, which I was so glad about because I was about to just walk off the course and just stop because I did not think my legs were going to be able to move anymore. And when I saw her, she was like, all right, we got to keep going. We got to keep moving. And I was able to finish the thing, but it was really, really scary for a moment. But even though I finished not as fast as I wanted to finishing at all was like such a massive accomplishment. And, and her and I both were like, almost feeling like we could cry just because of how like relieving it was to finally like finish the race after being in that much pain. It was such a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. I love that y'all could cheer and help each other. Yeah. A couple other quotes that come to mind, no sand, no pearl. Mm. Cause it's, it's the sand that irritated, you know, the oyster that made the pearl. Here's another one. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. We all want to progress. We all want to get stronger. We all want to get tougher. And, and we won't change and progress if we don't go through some challenges. Mm -hmm. and how do you fun. feel like how do you feel like your ankle will help you progress, even though it probably seems really frustrating now? Well, there's. There's obviously the physical ch change. I need to get, this will give me a chance to work on my upper body. I need to, you know, get in and pull with a pool buoy. I need to get in the weight room and work the upper body since my lower body is a little compromised while I let my left ankle heal. But it changes me that I have more empathy for others who are going through injuries, specifically an ankle injury. It's like, I know what it feels like now. And, right. um, you know, sometimes as a coach, I have I haven't been in a lot of pain in a long time in years. I haven't gone through some hard sets and injuries in years and I kind of forget what it feels like. And so it's it's good to have some empathy. It's good to have um, some more understanding of, of what other people are going through. So hopefully it changes me that way. Absolutely. And, and the last quote from John Wooden, greatest coach of all time. Don't let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. So. I know I can pull with my arms still. I know I can still move around and do some other things and still progress in other ways. And so that's the commonality with all these Olympians we're about to talk about next. They focus on what they could do and weren't distracted and discouraged by what they couldn't do because of their injury or adversity. I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions, especially with young athletes, for the most part, like when say you get a shoulder injury, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm an in I have an injury, so I'm not, I can't work out or I can't go to the pool or I can't do my sport. But there's always something you can do to get a little better. You don't have to completely shut it all down. You should be able to do something to keep your heart rate up and keep uh, you know, staying fit while working through the injury. So for anyone that's injured, there's always something you can do. And if you have any questions, just email us and we'll help you. <laughs> We're not doctors, but we will try to help you. <laughs> yes, it's always something. So I'm excited to get get pulling this week and uh, get the burn in the upper body since my, since I got to let my leg heal. Now, thousands of us, we've had thousands of stories about people overcoming adversity during the pandemic, the last two years, people figuring it out, doing the dry lands at home, making the most of the little water time they had and coming out the other side, best times. There's a thousand stories and that's cool. But there's some, there's some Olympic friend stories that I want to share with you real quick of their overcoming adversity. Um, Way back, oh gosh, I don't remember, remember how, maybe it was 2000, 2001, Natalie Coughlin was the star uh, high schooler, had a chance of making the 2000 Olympics. She got a shoulder injury. It was so severe, she basically had to kick for nine months. That's a long time. 
it's and so she developed her dolphin kick. She developed her leg strength and and just all kinds of kick. And then it, shortly thereafter, um, I believe in 2001 or 2002, she became the first woman to break. Um, I think it was a double O in the hundred back. And then of course she went oh. on to to um, two Olympic games and a bunch of world champs and just did amazing. One of the most decorated women of all time with 12 Olympic medals. So she overcame nine months of, of kicking. Uh, Aaron Pearsall was arm wrestling with some of the guys at Texas, busted his, his elbow or his shoulder, had to kick for about two months, two or three months, and got his legs really strong. The next year, he broke a world record. Rebecca Sony at her last Olympics, won the gold and set the world record through a groin injury. And of course, uh, well, Dana Vollmer, May 2004, missed 2008, devastated, came back in May 2012 and won the gold medal in the hunter fly in a world record. So a lot of adversity she overcame. And of course, Jason Lezak, oldest guy on the team, coach left, um, trained himself by himself for three years, finally made it to Beijing 2008, anchored the relay in the world record split, still the world record today. No one's even come close to that, that split. Jason Lezak overcame a lot of adversity. And then my favorite, though, I think is Ryan Lochte's story. Ryan and Michael go head to head in the 200 IM for the first time when they're when they're 19 years old in 2004, Athens, Greece, and they become fierce rivals in the 200 IM. And so, but Michael won, Ryan was second. 2005, Michael first, Ryan second. 2006, Michael first, Ryan second. 2007, 2008, 2009, Michael first, Ryan second. For six years. Michael's out touching Ryan Lochte. And, but Ryan is such a fierce competitor. He really wanted to beat Michael. He really wanted that world record in the 200 IM. And 2010 was going to be his year. But he, uh, Michael was kind of taking a little break. Ryan was training harder than ever. But then Ryan gets a groin injury. Ryan can't kick breaststroke for about two or three months. So all he can do is that dolphin kick breaststroke drill. You know, really working on his arm speed and his arm strength and his pull because he can't use his legs. And then sure enough, at the end of 2010, Ryan finally beats Michael Phelps and gets the world record. And it's still the world record today, 12 years later. And he used that injury to find a way to get better. So all these people have overcome adversity. Where you're not alone if you're in an injury and you're not alone when you're trying to climb out of it. And there's always something you can do. There's something you can control to, to make progress. So that's kind of a, any other closing thoughts on overcoming adversity? No, I mean, not that it's been said already. I just think that there's always something to do. And so, you know, I, and every, like you said, every Olympian has some, some type of adversity that, you know, lights a, lights a new fire in them to be great. So when you're faced with something like that, just try to put a new perspective on it instead of letting it tear you down. Yeah. And there's always something positive in the midst of adversity. For example, Friday night, I went to the school festival, my five-year-old school festival, and I won the raffle <laughs> and I won the game basket. It was a tower of games in a big basket. And those are the games right behind me. Wow. That's a good, that's a great raffle prize. I have not won a cool prize like that in, I don't think ever. Mm. And so like, so I, I had this great Friday night winning the raffle and going to the festival with my daughter and then uh, got to teach <laughs> in, in Minneapolis with four-time Olympian Allison Schmidt. And it was awesome. And then we played, we played soccer with our college team you know, like all these great things. And then yeah. I get this injury and it's like, man, but I'm, I don't want to get sidetracked with the one negative when there's so many positives. Right. So that's my closing thought. Yes, we're going to have adversity, but don't focus on that one little negative. Let's focus on the positives while we figure out how to navigate and strategize and get around that negative, that, that adversity. Okay. So next up, the verse of the day. I think Bible verses can be very, very helpful in getting perspective and overcoming adversity. And Isaiah 12, we're going to the Old Testament today, Noah. Isaiah 12, 2, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. 
the Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. And so I just love that cry. Like, God, you're, you're my everything. You're going you're gonna to heal me. I can trust in you. I'm not going to be afraid because I've got you by my side. You be my strength. You be my healer. You be my provider. And I just love that cry uh, that we find so all throughout the, the Bible. I just love that. Mm. And that can be the cry of our hearts. And then the second verse is Genesis 50. Noah, when was the last time you read Genesis 50? Oh, yes. So it's it's the story of Joseph. It's a it's an incredible story. And basically, Joseph, Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery, left him for dead. He um, ended up becoming a ruler in Egypt. And the brothers had to humbly come to Egypt to um, try and get food for their for their homeland. They didn't realize that Joseph was now one of the rulers of Egypt. And so he was kind of in disguise. But the brothers came to him and the story gets a little more involved. But basically, Joseph says, hey, surprise, I'm your brother. I'll give you the food. And what you intended for bad, for harm, God intended for good. And he worked everything out to accomplish what is being done. And that's going to save a lot of lives. And so it's a it's a very powerful scene, a very powerful story. And it makes me think of a movie. Noah, here we go. (laughs) Have, have you seen the movie or the play, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat? Of course I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, do you like musicals? I do. It depends on what it is, but I do like musicals. Yeah. So uh, the Joseph musical is kind of a fun way to get in your, your Bible lesson. It really is fun. And to see how God weaves the story for it to work out for good. So it's a so, movie or a play or both? There's both. There's okay. both. You can, they, well, they 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 videotape the play one time, mm. and it's a movie you can watch online somewhere. Got to add it to my list. Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, and it stars Donny Osmond. Mm. Do you know? Do you know who Donny Osmond is? It, it sounds very familiar, but I don't. I don't know anything about Donny Osmond. <laughs> this Donnie is the generational gap between the two of us that yeah, coming yeah. coming out. Donnie and Marie Osmond were famous singers and performers in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and even now. Like, they still go on. Like, for 40 years, for 50 years, these people, this brother-sister duo have been performing on stage and singing and dancing. Wow. Pretty incredible. The Osmond family, very famous uh, performance family. Okay. So that was the verse of the day. Now we've got this day, this week in history. By the way, today's National Telephone Day. I don't know what we do without telephones. Uh, especially the smart ones. But um, 1184 BC, the Greeks entered Troy using the Trojan horse. Noah, have you seen the movie Troy with Brad Pitt? I've seen the, I've seen the trailer. Okay. It's really good. I like the story, though. I like the Trojan horse story. It's a classic. Yeah. 1800, the Library of Congress was established. Over, over 100 million uh, books and resources are stored in the Library of Congress. Started way back in 1800. Here's some special swim, swimming birthdays. M- one of my Olympic teammates, Angel Myers Martino, was born in 1967. She was in the 92 96 Olympics. Another uh, teammate of mine, he was my captain, John Olson, was born in 1969. He was a two time Olympian, 92 96. Great guy, swam for Alabama, and just an incredible leader. Uh, so happy birthday, John. Happy birthday, Angel. And happy birthday, Tim Duncan, born yeah. in 1976, the famous world champion and MVP basketball player for the NBA, one of the most famous basketball players of all time. Tim Duncan was born in the Virgin Islands this day, and he started as a swimmer. He was a champion swimmer, held the records in the Virgin Islands for the 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds, and then a hurricane destroyed his pool. So he started picking up basketball and, of course, made the best decision, uh, played basketball at Wake Forest, and then made hundreds of millions of dollars in the NBA. Yep. I love it. I did know that. That's a fun fact that I did know, and I'm proud of myself for knowing that one. So my dream is to play basketball against Tim Duncan, and then he and I race in the pool afterwards. I bet he could still. I bet he could still do a good 25 freestyle. Oh yeah, yeah. When you're six eleven, it helps. (laughs) And uh, yeah, and he of course he lives. He still lives in San Antonio, my hometown. Yeah. So he he played for the Spurs his whole career. And now we move on to the swim news of the week. 
A lot of stuff happened this last week. A lot of stuff is going to take place this next week. Um, obviously, this next week is going to be the world trials for the USA World Trials. See who makes it to Worlds in Budapest in June. It starts tomorrow, and it goes all week in Greensboro, North Carolina. We were just there a few weeks ago for NC2As in Greensboro. You're going with our star swimmer, JT, for the 50 breast and 100 breast. And it's JT's first big world trial. So we're going to keep track of all the exciting events going on there. Some big names aren't showing up. Erica Sullivan uh, from Texas, the silver medalist, is going to let her shoulder heal. Simone Manuel still taking a break. Kelly Pash, one of my favorite swimmers, is not going to take a break. But we've got Michael Andrews swimming seven events and Kate Douglas swimming six events. And, of course, Caleb and Katie will be there. So it should be a fun week. Yeah, that's exciting. I'm excited to follow the meet. I'm excited to to be there live. So it'll be fun to watch it in person. But yeah, we're excited for our guy, uh, JT. But yeah, some of the some of the bigger names that aren't there is kind of is kind of disappointing. But I mean, I'm sure the people that are there are going to make the most of it. Yeah, and it's going to be a neat chance for some young stars to come out and and make a name for themselves. And hopefully, we do well in Budapest. We always we always do well. And oh, some cool news. My good friend Chase Kreitler is going to leave Berkeley and going to be the new head coach at University of Pittsburgh. Chase is a true ultimate swimmer and producer of ultimate swimmers. And I'm just really excited for him and his wife and his new baby. They're going to be moving to Pittsburgh. I did a clinic in that pool. It's a cool old pool. Did you ever race at Seton Hall at Pittsburgh? I never raced at Seton Hall at Pittsburgh. Well, we raced Pitt, but we raced at Rutgers. But I swam at that Pittsburgh pool when I was in high school and for some like travel meet that we did but it, it is a cool old pool i remember i uh i think i got disqualified in that pool for false starting which is sad but <laughs> it's like the only false start of my life but oh, yeah wow. but that's I great did. for chase though yeah it's a big deal big deal he's he's gonna be the head coach his first head coach job i saw the yeah, 100, dollars salary on there did you see that that's great it's great that's, that's huge Good job, chase. that's huge <laughs> i know and uh yeah in pittsburgh that'll be well and 13 years ago, I did a clinic in that pool with Peter Vanderkay, mm. the three-time Olympian. We had a blast. Um, another big coaching announcement, Notre Dame has a new head coach. The assistant at Louisville, Chris Landauer, is now going to be at Notre Dame. He's the new head coach at Notre Dame. Uh, so I, uh, I'm kind of a, proud of my Irish heritage and love Notre Dame. And so I, I hope that really works out well and wish him and the team all the best. Very exciting. Yeah. Kind of on a sadder note, a man died in New Zealand swimming a 14-mile open water event. His, he was 41 years old. His name was Nick Hobson, just a, a really lifelong swimmer. He was swimming 14 miles off the coast of New Zealand in 60-degree water, and he finished, and then he died. Wow. Yeah, it's supposed to be one of the, the most difficult uh, open water swims in the world, but he evidently he was per, he was kind of fine after the race and then something something went wrong but yeah it's supposed to be a very very dangerous swim yeah so it's got to be uh, it's upwards of five or six hours i would imagine um yeah no it's a there, and there's only been a handful of people that have done this swim i think i I kind of looked it up after but i think it's been like a hundred and like 30 people or not something like that not that many yeah and then Andrew Wilson, the Division Three Olympian, the only Division Three Olympian, has announced his retirement. And Andrew's just a great guy. Split his time between Emory University in Atlanta and University of Texas and University of Georgia, kind of training in those three spots the last several years. And uh, really loved by all his teammates and just an awesome breaststroker. Did a great job for Team USA these last several years. Just a neat guy, smart guy. And he's been studying in Oxford this year and announced his retirement from from his cool old dorm in Oxford. That's pretty cool. That's he's, he's probably a genius. That's awesome. Oh yeah. He's a neat guy. So congrats Andrew Wilson on a great career. And you know, this this next season of camps and clinics, we kind of hit the May, June, July. We uh we're going to be working with a lot of cool Olympians at our tour of ultimate sw ultimate swimmer camps and clinics. Um, here's just a little list. Here's just a partial list of the names that, that can come to your pool and that, I, that I'm getting to work with and travel around with. Lydia Jacoby, Allison Schmidt, Cody Miller, Annie Laser, Lily King, Blake Peroni, Townley Hawes, Nathan Adrian, Christy Kowal, Bobby Fink, Ryan White. 
these are just some of the Olympians that that uh, love to come to your team and love to travel around and help help inspire the kids through the Ultimate Swimmer camps and clinics. And then you and I are running the Oklahoma Ultimate Swimmer camp. We got three of them, June 6th through 8th, June 20th through 22nd, and July 18th through 20th. So three camps here in Oklahoma, and you and I will be running the practices. It's, it's basically 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. all day long. We train them. We videotape them. We uh, do dry lands. We have uh, talks on nutrition and balance and just all kinds of great stuff. I think it's probably the best swim camp deal in the country per, for the price. I agree. It's the best. As I've said before, all of all of the Ultimate Swimmer camps and clinics are the best deal for the price, and you're going to learn so much and have a lot of fun. So would highly recommend coming um, to any of the camps. And also, by far the best Olympians uh, traveling around uh, to do clinics, too. So go sign up, please. Thanks. <laughs> so I'll be making some appearance at the UT Swim Camp. Um, but, of course, you can just, you just Google Ultimate Swimmer. Uh, Josh Davis, Ultimate Swimmer Camps, Josh Davis, and you'll see all of our camps and clinics available. And then finally, I just found out we have a few openings that are very, very special. Ultimate Swimmer Camp in New Braunfels, Texas. Noah, you've been to New Braunfels. Uh, you've seen how fun that town is. That's a very unique camp. It's the only Christian swim camp of its kind in the world. We have ropes courses. We have um, skit night. We have just an incredible time with our counselors. We go play in the river. We train twice a day. It's, it's, uh, there's nothing quite like it where we have so much fun and we, we focus on some character development and, and Bible studies and, and really great swimming instruction. So we have some openings. If you look up T bar M T bar M swim camp, T bar M ultimate swim camp, we have a, just two openings left. And that is a very, very special camp. Well, holy cow, I think we're going to give some more news later in the week about the trials. I bet we can maybe hopefully do maybe some little bitty updates on the trials this next week to yeah. see what the USA team's doing. But uh, I want to encourage you guys to go make history uh, this week. Anything else in closing, Noah? Uh, nope, not that I can think of. I need to watch more movies, as always. It's my continuous goal every week. And so I'm going to go watch Joseph in the Technicolored rain suit or whatever you or whatever it's called. And, and uh, anyway, but yeah, we appreciate you all listening. And uh, go sign up for some great camps and clinics. And we'll see you next week. All right. Ultimate Swimmer and uh, gives camps and clinics. We'll get you there. And uh, we can't wait to see you around a pool soon. On behalf of Noah, Jan Chulis, I'm Josh Davis. Have a great week, and we hope to see you around a pool soon. And until then, keep streamlining and keep smiling. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>